All right, what's good, YouTube? Today we're doing another Swing Rounds episode. This time we're gonna be talking about the Carolina versus Vegas Invasion Search and Destroy. We're gonna be looking at the final two rounds, the round 10 where the Clayster got a Ninja Diffuse to force round 11, and then the round 11 itself. It's gonna be a fun one. Let's get right into it. So I figured I'd play the round out for you guys just so you get an idea of what's going on in the round, and then we'll go on and do our regular breakdown afterwards. So as you can see here, we basically have two guys for Carolina towards the B side. Clay is actually gonna be using a sub, pushing up into Broken here with uh, Rial watching over him with an AR. You have Goderex at this mid tank, kind of near these dumpsters, uh, trying to just jump spot mid, and then you have uh, Gwyn on the other side of the map playing close towards this A search, basically playing a one-off looking at the River Street. So Vegas is kind of playing this a little bit standard where they're trying to take their time to to see where they want to go and actually put some pressure on as an offensive team. They figure they're going to go towards this A side. They're going to smoke off the Lamar truck, as you see over there. Gwyn is here. He can't get one kill. It is a tradable spot. So even if he did get a kill, it was going to get traded right away. But he doesn't get a kill there. Goderex actually does get the kill. Uh, Rial gets a kill over here towards this riverside. Some trades go down in the middle BDOM area. And now you see it's a 2v2 with time winding down. So, you know, these guys have to plant. Rial sees both of them. Uh, I'm actually surprised that Clay didn't check bomb here just to get them off of it because if he gets them off of it they win the round with Rial still staying alive so as you can see here uh, they do get the bomb down and then Clayster goes straight for the defuse uh, pretty big ballsy play they have Rial watching over him watching his back door and watching his street and they're able to win this round to force the round 11. So let's break it down here we do have the two guys towards this B side number one is Clay using the SMG in this situation very surprising for you to see Clay running an SMG but he does run it in this strat and then you have Goderex watching towards this tank just playing his life making sure he can get some type of info on where vegas is going you know if they're crossing back towards the a side if they're crossing back towards dvd slash the b side you know you just want to make sure that you're having this information similar to that invasion strat that i talked about all the way back you know a few months ago before the game came out that you would see back in the day he's just playing info here making sure that he stays alive in this position and then towards the other side we're going to have gwyn in this one-off spot where he's just watching the street making sure that he just gets some shots down if he gets a kill great if not you know number two is there to trade him if if so uh, but it is a kind of risky spot but you know honestly if you're vegas you do have to hard clear if you're trying to go towards you know this water street side to plant towards a so on the vegas side they kind of have a standard spread where you have one guy watching this b push through you have two guys middle here and then you have one guy on the gas tank watching anyone that might be coming down this river street or you know spotting anyone that might be playing these lamar trucks over here so you know info getters for everyone by making sure that they make a play with each other later on in the round uh, however However, it kind of just takes a little bit too long and they kind of have the clock winding down on them as you saw uh, previously. So we'll break it down here now. As you can see, Clay's gonna take the time of actually trying to get pushed up into Broken. If no one on the offensive team starts to get pushed up close towards there at the beginning of the round, you can kind of take some space as you see Clay is doing here. Uh, and number seven here, Nero, is gonna give this up and he's gonna start playing towards DVD. Number eight is gonna pick it back up. But then they decide, you know, let's reroute, let's try and push Goderex out of this, you know, mid tank area they start nading him he has to be backed off just a little bit he's still trying to just jump spot they try nading him again and that misses and then uh, he actually hits a nade on these people back dvd2 so they're taking their time they're still trying to decide what they want to do with this and now you're finally seeing uh, number six and number five over here working towards this riverside because they want to decide to hit out this outer street towards this a side so as these guys are getting pushed up towards this a side you're going to have number eight playing inside blue making sure that anyone who's pushing through through for this Carolina side is met by him. He's basically that lurker type where you're making sure that you're covering your bases for anyone that might be hitting pitches on the defensive side. You know, he even moves towards this middle area here. So making sure that anyone that crosses towards this middle area to the A side is getting met with that info for a, you know, purge on this cross. So Gwyn sees they're starting to throw some tacks. They start uh, actually smoking out this Lamar tank area. That's going to be met with Rial who had rotated from this B side. You know, with Clay being pushed up towards this broken side you know Rial can kind of leave him over there and rotate towards this a side and help out towards there he's actually going to get smoked off just for a little bit here he's going to try and go all the way over toward this outer area and see through there to make sure that he can try and watch towards that street but you know these guys are already pushing and Gwyn is met with two guys right away he doesn't even get one uh, but Goderex is able to trade him out right here so that's bombed down so Goderex is able to get that trade even though he does die to Nero over here Rial is able to get a nice kill on this other guy 
after repositioning from the smoke, he's able to get attached, who was, you know, trying to push that Riverside with Standy. So this is a good play by him, you know, rotating over here, getting that kill, making sure that they can't get towards this bomb right away. And then as these trades go down, Clay is still alive. He goes over towards this DVD side. The other two Vegas players are towards mid. They have to get to bomb. As you see, the time is winding down. They only have 18 seconds to both get the bomb and plan it at the A side. So, you know, they have to get on their high horse, start going towards this bomb and planning it. And as you can see here, they're gonna try and work towards this side. You know, Rao doesn't even get a kill. I'm surprised he doesn't get that kill on Purge here, but they do back him off by double challenging him and they instantly plant the bomb. And this is a situation where nine seconds left. I was expecting Clay to, you know, just instantly hit this back door and try and check towards this bomb. But you know, in this case, it's kind of sketchy because technically Nero who's watching over Purge planting this bomb could just be angling himself looking at this back door. You know, the chances are low, but it's still a possibility. And in Clacer's mind, I think that's what he's thinking. So he doesn't want to check bomb right away. But I don't know. I'm, I probably check bomb in this situation just to see if I can get him off of it because you instantly went the round. Uh, if you can just at least put some pressure towards it and make him hop off that bomb. But you know, I get that safe play that he's trying to do. And then he wraps around towards here. They know that both had pushed through towards this cafe side. They get the call out from Real. He knows that both of them had pushed into red. And now Clay is just going to go and hop it right away. So in this position, he hops the bomb. He's probably trying to calm to Real, you know, just watch my back door and water street. So that's what he's able to do from this position. He can watch both at this moment. And then Clay's still hopping this bomb. He's diffusing it. Purge doesn't see him when he opens this door and Real sees that they checked it and didn't see Clay. So Clay sticks it. They're able to win this round and force that round 11. So big round for Carolina. All right, round 11 time. Carolina is on offense here. They're going to all team nade towards this B side. Make sure they're trying to back off anyone who's trying to rush towards that broken area quickly and kind of fake it out for them. As you can see on the other side, Vegas, uh, they're two twoing it. One guy cafe, two guys working towards this B side and then attach playing super safe towards these Lamar trucks. Uh, and as you see here, Carolina on this side, they're kind of playing a standard spread, just making sure that they can try and get some info on where people are. They see this guy cafe kind of back him down. Standing has to move back towards a search. He gets a free kill on Real, the bomb planner right here. So really big kill with bomb down in the middle of the map. And this forces Carolina to start doing something. So Vegas gets in the setup, one, two, one -ing. making sure they have this river street, making sure they have the bomb site and they're doubling up towards this mid tank. And, and Carolina just finds his open gap towards the B cut. Gwyn gets two kills on these guys. Both of them tank. They pick up the bomb, go towards this A side. Gwyn gets another kill here on the rotator from the B side. And now it's a 2v1 with Clay who would try to get info on where that last guy was. He was Lamar Trucks. So now it's a 2v1. They know where he is and they get the bomb planted. Now they just have to play tight, make sure that they're watching each other's crosses. They see, keep seeing attached towards this fire Humvee. They see him rotate around over here towards Mannequin. You know, Grotorek spots him right here. Gwyn's able to get this kill, jumping up and trying to get that angle on him. And Carolina wins this round 11. So let's bring it back here and we'll go into everything in a little bit more detail here. So as you saw at the start, Carolina full on team nading towards this B side, whether it's the fully sell, you know, a B hit or just to get information on anyone that might be going, you know, from this mid B cut to broken quickly, you know, whatever it is, they're team working that, making sure that they're using their nades effectively in some sense. And as you can see here, they're starting to work towards this mid side. Clay is going to slide over towards his windows, trying to clear out cafe. They actually see Standy in the credit spot on the top of the P1 and they're able to get some shots down. Neither of them get kills and they actually back Standy off over here. So what they're going to try and do is take that space. As you see Clay, he moves on into the cafe after the backed off standy. And now Real is going to try and move up towards this B Dom. But unfortunately, that's just not, you know, a play that they can make in this situation. With Standy in an unknown position after they backed him off while he was in cafe, you know, he could have backed off anywhere and he backs off right in the area that, you know, Real can't go. And they even have number eight purge uh, back here towards this white truck. And he can watch over towards the mid B Dom with Standy here. And Standy's just able to get a free kill on Real with the bomb. So this was actually a really big kill and this could have been the dagger for Carolina here. You know, bomb down in the middle map like this, this makes Carolina have to make some sort of play. You know, they end up finding the play and finding that gap, but this could have been a really, really bad round out of Carolina with that death. So after that first blood, Vegas falls into the setup where they have two guys towards this mid tank. One of them watching back AS and D and the other also watching back AS and D and the river street cross. But you also have number five watching this river street cross as well. So you have guys watching the same kind of thing and then number seven is the only guy watching this B cut. Unfortunately for Vegas here, number seven just gets really bad timing where he gives it up in the exact moment that Gwyn hits it and Gwyn gets this two piece. As you'll see here, uh, Nero is watching this B cut cross and then he's going to give it up right away, right as number four turns this corner. Number four turns this corner.
corner, he gives it up. As you see there, that instant moment where he gives it up, he doesn't have the info that he can get towards those middle players. And they're just gonna be left in the dust because they don't have this information. He's hitting it. He gets the freest two piece of his life because he knows both are there as he gets the comms from Clay. I'll rewind it back and as you'll see Clay, as soon as a Real dies, he tries to take some space, hitting out the back of AS and D's, tries to get towards this corner. And now he gets information on both of these guys towards this mid tank as they're trying to chow Goderex, who was in this cafe spot. So Carolina actually makes some good teamwork plays to try and salvage this. At least they're going down fighting, you know, if they're going to go down, but they actually make these plays. They get some space and they're able to utilize that by Gwyn getting this free two piece once they get that information. And once Nero had given up uh, that B cut. So unfortunately he gives it up at the wrong time. They get that opening. It's a 3v2. They know that one player is probably rotating from this B site. So that's what Gwyn picks up. He picks up Nero here, kills him. On the other side of the map, Clay is expecting one to be towards this Lamar area. He sees Dylan attach. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the kill, but they do get the information on where that last guy is. They plant the bomb and now they can just play each other's crosses. They see him cross towards, you know, the back cafe Humvee area over here. They're going to see him cross towards Mannequin right now. And then finally, once he's Mannequin, they see him once again. Goderex sees him. Gwyn pops up. He can start getting some shots and they win the round. So a really, really important two rounds for Carolina here. And apart from getting, you know, first death in that round 11, they did make some plays where they were going to go down fighting as a team, starting to work different angles together and just taking risk and hitting a route that honestly should have been picked up, but it wasn't in that very moment. It was given up and, you know, Gwyn capitalizes on it, gets that free two piece, opens up the round for them and they win that huge round 11 for the team in game five and they can take that win over Vegas. So that's going to do it for this episode of Swing Rounds. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.